Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hope everybody's doing well. So I'm going to start the presentation. More people are going to join along as the call progresses. But yes, hope everybody's having a good day. Just before we start the presentation, if you have any questions, reserve it till the end of the presentation, and then you can ask our guest speaker. I'll be sharing my screen now. Hi, everybody. So welcome to our Introduction to Dramatic Reading Workshop with Mr. Uzair Khan. And today, so a little bit about uh, me. I'm Zan Ali, I'm an Education USA advisor. And a little bit about the event, Dramatic Reading is an event under International Education Week. International Education Week is an initiative started by the US Department of State and US Department of Education. And it's an effort to promote programs that prepare Americans for a global environment and attract future leaders from abroad to study, learn, and exchange experiences. Uh, Education USA partners up with International Education Week in this effort, and a little bit about Education USA. Education USA is a global network under the US Department of State made up of over 425 international student advising centers in more than 175 countries. We are your official source to US higher education through, US, through Education USA advisors such as myself, working with advisees to provide updated, comprehensive, and unbiased information on higher education in the United States. So a little bit about the virtual dramatic reading contest. As you all know, it's being held virtually. There's a form once you go on our website on upcoming events. If you go on educationusa.pk, you go on upcoming events, there's an open submission call, you click it. And then you can, there's a Google form you will have to fill out. You would, make a, you would make and upload your video on YouTube. You would enter the link to that video, make sure it's public. And you enter that link in the Google form along with your name, what school you're in, what class you're in. And you submitted the deadline for these submissions is October 7th. Then our virtual ceremony where we'll announce our winners is going to be on 16th November, 2022. And uh, entries can be both in English and Urdu. We actually encourage it to be in both languages as there will be separate prizes for both English and Urdu entries. Uh, and today we're doing a workshop with Mr. Ozer Khan. He's going to introduce your dramatic reading and just walk you through some aspects of it. Ozer Khan studied drama at Stanford University and the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. I he has performed in several plays in Pakistan and abroad. And now I will allow Uzair to speak to all of you and give you a lay of dramatic reading. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Zen, for that introduction and the overview. Um, so welcome everybody to this dramatic reading workshop. Um, before we start, I don't know what the norms are with your meetings here, but I'd love to see everybody on video because it'll make the conversation uh, more interactive. So if everybody could kindly have their videos on, that would be great. I'm just going to wait for a few of you to do that. So that then, uh, since we're a smaller group, we can actually have some individual interaction. So you can take a moment if you need to set up accordingly and then just turn your video on, please. Thanks. And if you really have like a genuine issue, you can't have the video on, you can just send me a private message on the chat. That's fine. Okay, great. I'm starting to see some people now, Zishan, Zarar. Just waiting for a few others. Musa, Faja, Rubina, Samyan, Hafi, Omara, Hafsa, Azgar, Saida, Zara. All right, okay.
Okay, that's fine. I've gotten a message from one or two people. That's fine as long as you're connected. I'm just waiting for the others to come online on camera. Just give me one second. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to start with a simple introduction about dramatic reading. So all of your high school students understand. Um, so first of all, can someone tell me why, why do you want to participate in this competition? Have you done drama before or theater? Or are you interested in it? Anybody can share even if your camera's off, you can just share via audio. You can raise your hand and we'll just unmute you. And this uh, conversation can be multilingual as well. So Urdu or English, it's fine. Uh, could I start? Yeah, sure. Musa, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I'm Musa Salahuddin. I'm 17 years old. And uh, why I want to participate in this uh, workshop today is because uh, since I was young, I wanted to become uh, int I wanted to become I wanted to do something in the arts. I remember watching uh, one of my favorite movies when I was younger, Diary of the Wimpy Kid. And at the end, when the credits would come on and I'd see the cast, I would be, man, I have to be in one of those movies someday. So since I was young, I did want to become an actor. And that is partly what I want to do in the future as well. When I go to study in the US, uh, drama and theater will be something that I will be studying in as a minor, in addition to my major. So. Yes, that's why I wanted to do this workshop today and the following competition. Awesome. Okay. Yes, I also did drama as a minor when I was in the US. And I assume that many of you want to maybe go for higher studies to the US or other places. Okay, anyone else? Can we have one more person share? Any of the la ladies, any of the girls want to share? Hafsa, can I pick on you if you don't mind? <laughs> Yeah, okay, sure, why not? Yeah, okay. I'm in dramatic reading and have you done anything like this before? Hmm. I've done a few things like this before. I participated in many plays in school and I've taken place in many speeches and stuff and I really enjoyed it. And I wanna do more stuff like that. So that's why I'm kind of here. Okay, great, great. So I'm happy to see that. It's great to see that there are people interested in this stuff. And I'm glad USCFP is also encouraging this, the Fulbright Commission. Um, because, you know, the like theater is one thing, but the arts in general are like the foundation of any society, right? So, you know, there's one theory that, oh, first you develop everything else. And then finally you get to the stage that you can bring art into society. But if you look at it in the past, uh, art has actually been a fundamental part of any society that was developing and emerging because jo aapke human values hain, human values those come through like you know your culture your art and your artistic expression so it's very important in um, you know one's development and so i'm glad you guys are getting opportunities for creative expression okay great so uh, now in this competition what you're going to be doing is you're going to be selecting a uh, a monologue it can be in english or it can be in urdu and it's something that you're going to record perform and basically send it in and then judges are going to evaluate it right but the idea is to just give you that space and that platform to share um to express yourself so now in terms of monologues uh, we can also talk about that later in terms of selecting monologues you can find famous monologues online you can look for there are lots of resources you can look at theater monologues you can look at even famous uh, dialogues from movie scenes, like longer uh, monologues. You'll find websites that have all of that. Uh, you can find the same in Urdu as well. You could even, uh, if you're doing English or Urdu, you could even find poetry. Um, so you could even choose like a piece of poetry um, and kind of perform that and send that in. Um, okay, so now what I want to ask you is that what makes a performance compelling? Like when, you see a good performance. What do you think are some of the ingredients of a good performance or of a good dramatic reading? So the expressions. Okay, so there are the expressions. Tika, so you need to be expressive. Okay, great, great. Um, hi, this is Mohsen. I think vocabulary also plays a very big role 
in terms of being able to capturing the audience and sort of making them feel what you want them to feel. Yeah. Okay. So what do you mean by vocabulary? Like the, do you mean the enunciation, like the way the words are pronounced or do you mean the words themselves? The word themselves, because I feel like certain phrases have more impacts than normal phrases. So I okay. feel like that would play a major role. Yeah. Okay, good. So if something is well written, we've all experienced that something that is well written is very compelling. And then something that is presented in an expressive way, as Zarar was saying, is also compelling. You don't want somebody to just read something monotone, right? Otherwise, it's just like a little speech. So we're not doing speeches, we're doing dramatic readings. Speech, you sometimes see people just uh, say words, but they say them loud and then they say them low, right? Sometimes they seem a little unnatural unless they're connected, uh, unless you're connected to it at the feeling level. So when we're talking about emotions, it's important to be connected at an emotional level to the piece as well. Okay, one or two more things. What else could make a performance compelling? Any other suggestions? Anything we've missed? So the content of what's um, being spoken. Um, okay, let's go one by one. So Musa, you can go first. Yeah. I think going all out is very important because yeah. uh, some performers, they might hinder themselves. They might try to hide certain pieces of their emotion, maybe because they feel that it's too, it's, it has, maybe it has an impact that is way too great, but that is nothing of the sort. You have to go all out. You have to display every single bit that you are feeling to make yeah. the audience as well okay amazing amazing so give it your 100 percent you know what this is something i learned like in life and you guys are going to keep experiencing this that if you're going to do something you make a decision to do something you just need to give it your 100 percent so i was uh there was this play that i was doing here in islamabad once many years ago um it was called tom dick and harry and the director wanted my character to do something really kind of weird and embarrassing like you know he just had to kind of get out of the couch and I don't know it was just really embarrassing like he was hiding from his wife and he had to kind of stick his rear out towards the audience so anyway it was just like something that you know one gets conscious about doing oneself right and then I realized the more conscious you get about doing something like that the more the weirder like the more it kind of stands out but if you just give it your hundred percent then you know, it's just in the flow, like uh, people take it in the flow. And with anything in life, when you give it your 100%, that's where the genius and the talent starts coming up. Okay, Zarad, you were going to add something else? Uh, so I was saying the content of what's being spoken. The content. Okay, so the content, uh, so that's good as well, because that's going beyond vocabulary, it's going into also what is the content. That's fine. And Mohsin, you wanted to add anything else? I thought you were saying something. It's okay if you weren't. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so anyone else? Uh, by the way, others, I'm still waiting for those of you who are still not on screen. See, I'm interacting more with the people who I can see. So it'll be great if like even a couple more of you can come online and we'll, you'll really get the uh, come on video. You'll get the most out of this session. Um, but feel free to chip in with audio if you want. Okay, Kasim, I'm glad your camera's turning on. Waiting to see you. All right. So another thing that I'll just add to some of the suggestions you guys gave was what makes a performance compelling is the authenticity, right? So being authentic. So when you see like a performance or an Oscar winning performance, it is, uh, okay, Zara, I'll come to you in a second. It's authentic, right? It um, doesn't seem fake. Right. So sometimes you'll notice, I mean, we go to theater plays and or you just see maybe maybe it's even a school play and all And Sometimes you see and it's great, like people are acting and all. But if you really work on the acting part a bit, you can make the performance more authentic because sometimes you see people and you know that they're acting. Right. And it's kind of fun to watch because you're like, oh, yeah, acting kar like, you know, he's acting like an angry person or he's acting like a sad person. But there's one subtle step beyond that where you're being truly authentic and it doesn't seem like you're putting on an act. Yeah. So that is very subtle and that's where the skill comes in. That's where you're actually harnessing the emotion instead of just being like, okay, now my character is very angry. I'm going to act like an angry person. But the book, that's going to be at a very superficial level. It's not really going to compel somebody but if you can find whatever you can relate to in that character 
and channel it with something in your life, which you can use as an example when you felt that emotion. For example, let's say, let's say that there is a character. Okay, let's say you've picked a monologue and it's about a character who's lost his job. Okay? Now, most of your high school students, you may not have ever had a job or experienced what it's like to lose a job, okay? or how that actually feels. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be inauthentic now in your display. So you need to get to uh, the core of it. Like you see, okay, this person has just left, lost their job. And what are the emotions they might be experiencing? They might be experiencing very sad, for instance, right? Sad or despondent or feel like they're losing hope. And then you kind of look at an example in your life where you might have felt like that. Could have been like maybe when a pet died, a dog, you lost a dog, or I don't know, it could have been something else in your life, right? Where you had that same emotion, maybe something was taken away from you, or I don't know, you failed a class, maybe just one subject you failed or something, right? And you felt that way. So it's about experiencing that emotion because that is something you can relate to, right? But applying it to that monologue. So it really boils down to this is something what my acting teacher told me and it was really something that really hit me deep inside was she said that acting is not reality, but it is truth. So acting is a very truthful process. You have to be true to what is being said or to what you're saying. It's not fake, right? And so, so the circumstances might be different, but the human emotions are universal. So, you know, you can apply those from your life. And if it helps, by the way, if anyone has, if you have like a pad or a pen in front of you, some of these little things you can just note down. Uh, you don't have to make long notes. You can just note those down because when you're working on your monologue, it'll be helpful to kind of refer to this. Okay, wait, let me first get uh, Zara. You wanted to say something? Zara, sorry, Zara. Zara Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to have this platform to actually learn. Um, I'm really glad that you have actually, uh, you know, make this um, opportunity available. So when talking about compelling performance, I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to actually add that not only the content, but the expression and being less conscious is very, very important. And indeed, you are very right that acting is indeed a truthful process. Thank you. All right, Zara. Thank you very much. Musa, you wanted to quickly add something and then I'll move on. No, I'm sorry. I think I have muted myself uh, by mistake. Okay, no worries. No worries. Okay. Okay, so, so authenticity, 100%. I gave you already one tip on how to channel like the emotions. You can look at experiences in your life, which you can apply to the circumstances that the person is going through in the monologue. Okay. Achha, now, another very important thing in terms of giving an authentic performance uh, when you're recording your pieces, sending them in, is showing versus doing. So these are two concepts. So sometimes when you're acting, and it's okay, it's normal, you'll notice this, that there's a tendency to want to show, right? Rather than do. So let's say, again, chalo, main angry wala example kar leta hon, uh, deta hon aapko. So it's like, if your character is angry, you might feel like I need to show that I'm angry rather than just being angry in that moment, right? Or let's say, for instance, if it's um, a character that's very sleepy, let's say character is very sleepy, right? So you'll feel like, okay, I need to show the audience that I'm very sleepy right now, right? And you might over-exaggerate and, you know, all of that to show that you're being sleepy as opposed to just being that, right? So for instance, if you're very sleepy in real life and let's say you're in a situation around people, what would you actually do? You wouldn't be showing that you're sleepy. You'd be trying to make yourself less sleepy and kind of power through that thing. So it's actually the opposite. But if you're acting it, you might have a tendency that, okay, I have to show that I'm very sleepy. But what will be more authentic is to play a sleepy person who's trying to do whatever he needs to do in that moment without revealing that he's that sleepy. So do you understand? I'm trying to think of a few more examples to make this very clear. But showing versus doing. So isme wo jo Zara kari thi, that point about being conscious, that goes away because you are just being truthful in the moment and you're not trying to show something. You're just trying to be there in the moment. 
see when you have a scene partner when you're acting with a scene partner i mean this is different because this is you just sending in a monologue but when you're acting with a scene partner they say the most important and this is just a tip for later on as well as you do more theater in high school and all the most important person in the scene is not you it's your scene partner so you need to be fully zoned in on the scene partner because you are listening to and reacting to what they're saying right so this tip will be really helpful even for your monologues like sometimes how we learn and perform plays is we just learn our lines so we know that okay when let's say hafsa says her lines then mohsin will say his line right if hafsa says one line then the response to that mohsin says that's his line right but how mohsin says his line depends on how hafsa says her line because it's a conversation it's building on that right so let's say if he's practiced that i'm going to be delivering this line very angrily but she doesn't give him that then it's going to seem very inauthentic if he then delivers his line in an angry way does that make sense what i'm saying yeah so you guys can read more about this person you can actually write the name down his name is meisner sanford meisner so he's one of the pioneers of uh, acting craft and technique in the west and uh he really emphasizes this that it's moment to moment truth so okay fine i can learn my lines for like let's say a play but how i and i'll practice and i'll rehearse but how every time i deliver it it has to be fresh because it has to be how you're feeling in that moment meisner that's m e i s n e r i'll just put it in the chat box in a minute so you're playing moment to moment truth the your line how you deliver it depends on how the person before you gives their line so then you know you are just uh, focused on being authentic so you don't have to really show anything you just have to be authentic moment to moment and that's what a good performance will be so even in the context of this monologue uh, you will be rehearsing it a bunch of times practicing it a bunch of times but when you're actually recording it you have to imagine that that time you are having that conversation afresh not just the way you practiced it take care the practice will give you the ups and downs it will give you the cadence it will give you the points of your thing but if you will just recite it like a memorized thing it's not going to seem authentic so 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 that's another tip huh in that moment that you you see how you can do that authentically okay i'm just going to put meisner's name down here in the chat box you can look him up all right okay so um okay now let's look at something called given circumstances so now whatever monologue you pick whether you pick a monologue or you pick a poem even if you pick a poem it might be helpful to do this exercise so there are a few things we need to look at in terms of before we uh, as we start working on our monologue theek hai one of those is called the given circumstances now given circumstances means um and wait i have a screenshot i'll see if i can drop this into the chat box i should be able to in a bit so given circumstances means that what has happened right before the monologue begins so monologue is not happening in thin air right so you are a character who is in a particular situation so thoda sa apne ye homework karna you just need to go back a bit and think okay what happened right before the character started this speech or this dialogue or this conversation what happened right before uh who is the character speaking to now with some monologues you might find on the internet and all that with some monologue the character is not necessarily speaking to anybody it's just a monologue they're kind of speaking out but what's going to help you give a convincing monologue is that you come up with someone who the person is speaking So even if it is monologue, you decide who they who they're speaking to. Uh, you come up with someone because that changes the way the monologue is delivered. And there's no right or wrong choice. You know, even in theater school, we would experiment with these things. So you find out what happened right before. Who is the character speaking to? Um, where are they? ठीक है. Where are they? Uh, what is the mood of the monologue? What is the personality of the character? what happens after the monologue ends you can just think about that as well what is happening next uh what is the character wearing that will also help you um and so i mean i don't think there are any instructions about this from uh, education usa 
but like you don't have to go all out in terms of a costume or anything but you can just think about what your character might be wearing like let's say if you're playing a character in his mid 20s who's a writer how might they dress maybe they're wearing the shirt like i am have a pen in their hand it could be something like this so you know thoda sa you can play with that as well because even the kind of shoes you're wearing the kind of shirt you're wearing the clothes you're wearing is going to affect how you feel don't you feel different when you wear different kinds of clothes when you go to a wedding and you're in a suit don't you feel very different the way you walk is different when you wear those little the shoes with the heels as opposed to when you're in sneakers so, so those things also it's a little more subtle i mean it's a little more detailed but even those things make a huge impact theek okay? hai so given circumstances are really important because it looks like this is not coming out of thin air um your character this is actually on a journey and he's coming from somewhere theek okay? hai uh, before i move on any questions about the given circumstances i'm going to try yes, this in the I, box please go ahead nothing i was just saying i think there's a question in the chat box oh okay let me have a look i know i i could you tell me what the question is i don't really see it yeah zen yes uh zara is asking for you to repeat the name of the person you said earlier oh i wrote the name down i wrote the name down so no worries okay. meisner i already wrote the name down and one second guys i'm just trying to drop this file into the chat box let's see if this works um give me a second um i have a question Yes, please go ahead and ask while I'm. Yeah, in terms of like uh, given circumstances, the way you were talking about, like there has to be a person who the monologue is delivered to and everything. Yeah. Yes. Can it be like any historical movie scene that we've seen in like Hollywood all across the years and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be something like that. It could be like a monologue from right. Top Top Gun, and if you've picked the monologue, let's say it's Tom Cruise delivering the monologue. you then right. want to research and just see who is he talking to is he talking to the instructor or is he talking to his best friend right. or who talking to because that changes the way you kind of deliver it all right so, then i had a quick question i had like one or two image files um would it be possible yes. to email that to the group afterwards or cuz i can't seem to yes. get it you can uh send it to me and i can email it to everybody all right okay so anyway uh i will try to get that to you guys the the list for the given circumstances but broadly it's what i am speaking about right now and what you're asking about theek hai any other questions before we move on i did not receive the name of the person if someone who has received it could send it again or could you send it again okay i'm just writing it in the group again theek hai did you get it yes thank you yes thank you okay all right sorry question often yes uh, yes go ahead who wants to ask uh, so so we imagine ourselves in that situation and then we allow ourselves to act naturally according to that situation uh or do we have to like uh, give artificial emotions like if it's saying you have to be angry no so you don't have to see that's the thing now if you feel the monologue demands you to be angry um like you can work on the monologue and like you can channel that anger but like just keep it within the realm of what is realistic right if it seems too unrealistic then the whole monologue is going to look artificial so you know sometimes you what you notice is if you look at famous plays or even if you look at movie scenes that have been made like if you look at an old movie and then you look at the way the move, if there's been a modern version of the movie made and you see the same dialogues you notice that different actors will deliver them very differently so sometimes in scripts or in theater texts you'll see that there will be little notes like character name like let's say romeo and then in front of that it will say in brackets angrily and then there'll be a line so it means that okay he's delivering that line angrily but that's just to kind of okay that's just what the playwright is just giving us it's kind of like a cue but it's not mandatory so basically from an acting realistic acting point of view i would say you can use that as a hint but you don't need to stick to that you could actually deliver that line in a completely different way as long as it's authentic yeah and that means that you made a different choice right uh, about how you want to de- uh, deliver that line so yes, thank you, yeah so i hope that makes sense so so you'll work for okay so no wait let me give you more of a structure now of how you can actually rather than just thinking about the emotions how you can uh, look at how to work on the structure of your monologue 
So now there are three very important things and I'm putting another complicated name down. This guy's name is Stan Slavsky. So he's also one of the fathers of acting. So Stan Slavsky came with, up with um, these two or three aspects that are very important to look at when you're doing a dramatic performance or a dramatic reading. Because if you're just reciting something that is coming out of nowhere, it's kind of going to fall flat and you won't feel the dramatic tension. So dramatic reading means that the dramatic tension has to be there. So Usme, there are three things you need to look at and think about, and you can actually write those down because those are like the Bible of basic like acting 101. The first is objective. So what is your character's objective in the scene? So that's what you need to figure out. Now for different actors doing the same monologue, the objective could be completely different. And that's fine. It's just about picking an objective. Um, so yeah, so objective is basically to sum it, uh, to put it in simpler terms, the objective is what does your character want in the scene? So every character wants something in a scene. That's how we look at this in terms of like a dramatic performance. So what do they want? So um, if you're looking at a monologue, uh, just like, uh, like, okay, Romeo underneath uh, Juliet's balcony, right? Whatever speech he's making over there, there's a beautiful monologue there. I don't remember all the words. Um, he's making that monologue. Maybe his objective is, okay, the objective could be, I want Juliet to like me, right? Or it could be like, I want Juliet to notice me. It's a subtle difference. Actors can play differently. Or it could be like, I want Juliet to think I am the best person in the world. Or it could be, I want Juliet to know that I am rich. It could be any of those things. So that's the, I, I know, <laughs> somebody making a face. But anyway, it could be any of those objectives. I'm just trying to give you an example because whatever objective you choose, the way the character will deliver the dialogue will be slightly different. I want Juliet to know that I'm the most humble person in the world. Well, and keep it as simple as possible. It could be like, okay, I want Juliet to go out with me. Take care. So any of those could be Romeo's objective in that, in his monologue, right? So, so your objective is like the guiding principle of your whole monologue. So in your whole monologue, then you have a focus. Basically by the end of the monologue, you want that you achieved your objective. So now you actually have to strive for something. You have to give it your hundred percent because you have to achieve your objective. And now how do we raise the stakes? See. Like a dramatic performance is not interesting if it's flat, like, oh, if, okay, imagine like, okay, for lack of a better example, imagine like, let's say a Bollywood movie where people are just, the hero and the heroine are just dancing from beginning to end on several songs, right? That's not fun, right? Because there's no, I mean, it's just flat. There's no like challenge or obstacle or, you know, to overcome, right? So you want to kind of uh, see that. So that's why the stakes have to be high for the character. So you need to think that why is this such an important monologue or a life-changing monologue uh, for the character? So what is the obstacle? So now the second most important thing after objective is obstacle. So what is the obstacle? Isme, again, you can think of any obstacle. You can make any obstacle you want. You can choose as an actor, which you feel will fit into the situation. Uh, as I said, again, Actors choose different objectives, different obstacles for the same monologues, and they come across differently, so it's fine. So, for instance, one obstacle could be like, so if Romeo is delivering the monologue to Juliet under the balcony, one obstacle could be like, um, in those days, it was not very acceptable for maybe a man to speak to a woman like that openly right or express his feelings like that openly right so that could be one obstacle it makes it difficult like he wants to express himself but there's also something holding him back that could be one obstacle or like okay this is like uh yeah i mean this could be a little funny actually if it was a parody of romeo and juliet but the other thing is that juliet could be really far away so the obstacle could be like that she can barely hear him so Romeo might actually have to be extremely loud and might have to shout out a few lines, right? So, so that could be an obstacle. Another obstacle could be, I mean, a basic obstacle, if you actually look at the, 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 the play, is that they come from two warring families, two families that do not get along with each other. So that's a huge obstacle, right? 
It means that, let's say, so the obstacle could be that Romeo thinks that he's going against his parents, right? So the obstacle could be like, I'm going against my parents, right? But he has an objective, but then there's an obstacle. So that obstacle has to be there because that's going to create the dramatic tension for the character and make the stakes high. Okay, so you need to think of that. And then the third thing is the action. So the action is what the character is doing to achieve their objective. Like for instance, if again, I'm just sticking to the same example to keep it simple. So if the objective is to get Juliet to like me, right? Let's say that's the objective. What is the action? What is Romeo doing to get Juliet to like? It could be by praising, right? So it depends on what the content of the monologue is. It could be by praising her, it could be by um, appearing humble. It could be by, um, what are other examples? So, so, so actions are very uh, active words. So like a few words that I wrote down here are like, okay. So these are actions. In your monologue, you could be persuading. Okay, here's another one that could apply, persuade. So like Romeo could be persuading, you could be convincing coaxing, caressing, begging. So, you know, okay, so let's use these as an example. These are two very different approaches. One is praise. Maybe he could be praising. Maybe he could be persuading. Maybe he could be begging. And you know, with the same lines that are there, you can actually do all those things, the way you deliver it. The way you deliver those lines, it could be like he's begging her. Or the way you deliver those lines, it could be like he's persuading her. Or the way you're delivering those lines, it could be like he's sucking up to her. Or it could be like he's teasing or mocking. Um, I'll just give you an example of more action words, flatter, appeal, seduce, educate, explain, uh, encourage, cheer up, aggravate, trick, lie, belittle, reject, attack, provoke, antagonize. Yeah, your, so your monologue could be like where you're antagonizing somebody, right? Uh, reassure, deceive, hurt, soothe, command, charm, exclude, reveal, scare, ensnare, justify, enchant. I'll share some of these as well. You can also look these up, action verbs. Um, so these are tactics. These are tactics that your character is using. So again, to sum this part up, basically you need an objective, you need an obstacle, and you need to figure out what is the action your character is using to achieve his objective. And when you're rehearsing your monologue, you can try it two or three different ways. And you can see that, okay, does it, if my character, is he trying to persuade? Is he trying to belittle? Is he trying to humble himself? Like you can try those and see which way you feel, you know, it's more interesting. Um, okay, so that might have been a lot of new information, these last three things, these three concepts. So any questions on the objective, the obstacle and the action? Anything that is unclear or anything you want to clarify further? Um, question, hi. Um, you, you, when you spoke about the fact that the monologue has to be delivered to a specific person, like it can't be. So like, what if, you know, I have a line and then technically that person has to have a line for my reaction, right? Yeah. And now obviously that person can deliver the line. So how are we supposed to go about with that? Thank yeah. you. Okay. That's, that's a very good question. Um, I think there are some limitations in terms of the format of this thing because it's going to be an online, you know, video that you're sending in. But I still feel if there's a monologue you like, and let's say if there's just maybe one line that's being delivered by somebody else in the thing, you can still pull that off. So basically, you would be delivering your line, and then basically you would be imagining that that line is being delivered to you. So all that we would see is your expression, right? Um, during that time, your expression, and, and then you would kind of continue with your monologue. So I think that would be good enough, like just your uh, expression or that pause for us to kind of gather and infer um, what, what you mean from that. So okay. for instance, I'll give you an example now. Okay, so let's say I'm having a conversation with somebody. So I'm asking them, are you coming to the party? And they say, no, I'm not coming to the party. And I'm kind of surprised. Okay, like, why aren't they coming to the party, right? So I could be like, Oh, hey, so Mushal, how's it going? Are you coming to the party? Oh, well, I thought you were definitely going to come to the party. 
so so see like the the line wasn't delivered but you still got the essence right yeah yeah that the character heard the line and we understood that yeah right all right uh somebody put a question zara on switching characters that would be a little uh ambitious for this project i mean you could try it um but i feel like it's a very limited format it's just one minute or something right is it one one and a half minutes then i don't remember exactly um yes um it can be between one to two minutes one to two but minutes keep it to words i would say like one one and a half minute okay okay ah okay so this question was for mohsin okay from zara okay no zara i would suggest uh, it's best to do it the way i was suggesting that rather than him switching the character he just listens you just listen to what the other person is saying and then you continue with your conversation so in most cases it should still make sense yeah monologue should still make sense um anyway so some of these tools are just like a kind of a structure to you know help you get into your monologue um without um, you know having some structure to approach it with rather than just approaching it from thin air and then you know because the emotions you guys were talking about that in the beginning then those are things that you let happen let those come naturally and where you want to add more of those then you can see how you want to add it because dekho agar if you have an objective and you know there's an obstacle and you know what your action is that's all you have to be focused on and then the emotions will come naturally right and where you're struggling with those emotions that's where then you can do think in your personal life you can think of an example add that to that situation right and kind of see um uh yeah kind of see how that works another thing i would suggest is really um ha huh, okay so let's uh, wait any more questions on this objective obstacle and action let's have one question yeah is there sometimes uh you speak normally but you expressive in a way but by your facial expressions that you're angry so is that a good approach or sorry I, I, i didn't catch that yeah uh, sometimes you, your tone is normal yeah but your expressions are angry mm. and uh, so so is that a good approach or is it too mild mm. no like i feel like your tone should be matching your uh, expression or your emotion and that usually happens naturally right like you have in the con if you're just getting angry then the tone will get angry if you're getting impatient if you're getting happy the tone will change so if you overthink it then there might be a disconnect but if you just let it happen naturally so so then it won't happen so i would say the first few times you practice the monologue uh this is what we do as well when we work on scripts or work on plays initially we don't try and become the character immediately we just read it as we would naturally a few times trying to say the lines with authenticity and then after a few times you can then add the layers of your character right like first you just say the line uh you recite the lines and just make them authentic start owning the words and the lines and then you can add okay like for instance this character is very impatient right the monologue is about him being very impatient so then you can add that in right you add that in so then you add that layer of an impatient person or an obnoxious person and all of those kind of things but the first get to the the natural huh? authenticity of it um when you're practicing your monologue uh it will would be helpful practicing it like you're delivering it to somebody in real life so it would be helpful if you have a friend or somebody who you're not very conscious in front of who you can practice your monologue with so because sometimes what happens is and this is what happens a lot of times with beginners that it's like you're just saying words but it's not like you're really having a conversation or saying something so there's a huge difference sometimes people are just saying their lines like they're just saying words but all these plays that are written or even if you write your own monologue by the way you can write your own monologue as well so chalo we we'll talk about that towards the end if you want to write your own monologue but it is something that is actually being said to somebody so what will be really helpful is if you actually place somebody in front of you and you actually say that monologue to them even if you have to hold it you can just hold the paper and keep reading it out and say it to somebody like a friend or anybody in your house a sibling but say it like actually like say the words like you're having a conversation with them 
and practice it that way and then practice on your own so in your own then you can also practice as if you are actually talking to somebody then then it's going to feel real because it's like you're actually talking to somebody and then when you do your final recording also imagine that like you're talking to a person right you're either trying to convince somebody or persuade somebody uh you were trying to achieve that objective right and that's why it's important for you to communicate with somebody so again this is a subtle difference but like acting is about communication you need to be communicating and making sure um you know your word is getting across okay all right what else so let me just share uh actually let me just put a quick link down here we can just look at a sample monologue uh i mean we don't really have time to work on monologues individually or anything like that but those of you who can who are on a laptop can open this link this is a monologue from charlie brown it's like a nice funny little monologue are most of you able to open the link you can just give me a quick thumbs up just put a thumbs up if you're able to open the link it's in the chat box yeah okay i'm guessing most people are able to open it okay great Also, I have a question. Yeah. And uh, so, what's the time frame uh, for our videos to do? Uh, well, Zen was just telling us that it's, I think, one to two minutes. Yeah. Just read the instructions that were sent to you. I think it's one to two minutes long. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let's talk a bit about operative words now. So, when you're working on your script, like now you have this in front of you, this little monologue. So, what can also help is that you. Um, so there are two things one is called beats okay beats and the second is operative words so first okay let's look at beats so a beat is when there is like a shift in thought or emotion during a monologue so for you structurally it will be good to kind of just mark those up with a simple line in between the lines so let me just um, read this one out and we can see where the beats are so for instance okay I think lunchtime, I'm just reading this flat right now. It's just to see the beats. I think lunchtime is about the worst time of the day for me. Always having to sit here alone. Okay, now I would say this is a beat change. So see, first this person is saying, I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day for me. Always having to sit here alone. And then the sightless sight shift in tone and in thought process, because then this character is like, of course, sometimes mornings aren't so pleasant either. Waking up and wondering if anyone would really miss me if I never got out of bed. Then there's the night too, lying there. Okay, so that's another beat change. So miss me if I never got out of bed. So beat, you add like a line there that shows there's a beat change because then the character is thinking about now the night. He's like, then there's the night too, lying there and thinking about all the stupid things I've done during the day. And all those hours in between when I do all those stupid things. Then it's a big beat change. So these are small beat changes. And then the big beat changes, there's that cute little redheaded girl eating her lunch over there. So that's now a big change because suddenly, you know, the topic and all has shifted. So I'm just going to read this again, just to make it clear to you how and why. So, so even if I was to recite this, even if I was to do it, I haven't worked on this one, but just if we were to do it as an acting monologue, I think lunchtime is about the worst time of the day for me. Always having to sit here alone. Of course, sometimes mornings aren't so pleasant either. Waking up and wondering if anyone would really miss me if I never got out of bed. Then there's the night too. So see, there's a little beat change here. Then there's the night too. Lying there and thinking about all the stupid things I've done during the day. And all those hours in between when I do all those stupid things. There's that cute little redheaded girl eating her lunch over there. I wonder what she would do if I went over and asked her if I could sit and have lunch with her. So then that's a big beat change, right? So the beat change is just showing you the moods 
and the, th the emotions that are changing. So you can mark those in your monologue. So it'll show you where and how you need to change the delivery. And then it's not going to seem monotonous because where you've put the beat change, you'll know, okay, okay, Abhi, the mood, the emotion, the thought process has changed a bit. So there'll be all those layers to your monologue. Take care. Like for instance, if you look at the first paragraph again, <laughs> so the first two lines, he's just talking about, he's sitting alone at lunch, this character. This is a really good monologue as well. Uh, he's just sitting alone at lunch and he's thinking about how sad it is to sit here alone at lunch. Then there's a slight beat change. Then he thinks further like, oh my God, even in the mornings, I don't feel that great. And then there's a beat change and he's like, oh my God, even at night, like, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then there's a big beat change because he's talking, he suddenly sees this redheaded girl sitting across eating her lunch. And then he's like, I wonder what she would do if I went over and asked her if I could sit and have lunch with her. Then there's a beat here. So you can put a line, there's a beat change. Cause then he's like, she'd probably laugh right in my face. It's hard on a face when it gets laughed, uh, laughed in. Then there's a beat change again because he notices there's an empty place next to her on the bench. There's no reason why I couldn't just go over and sit there, right? I could, I could do that right now. All I have to do is stand up. I'm standing up. So anyway, so the beats are not fixed as well. I've just given an example of where they could come. They don't have to come exactly at those points. This is also something you can read up more about online as well. You can look into beats in acting and search that. Um, another important thing, yeah, because we have to wrap up soon, so I'll quickly talk about operative words. We won't go into this in detail, but operative words are like, what are the words that are the important words in the sentence? Like, if you look at the first sentence, I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day for me. So if you just put down, you can put a line underneath the two or three operative words it will give you a sense of the sentence. Because sometimes actors deliver lines and people still don't get the sense of the sentence. But if you still don't understand what they meant, that's because they're not hitting the right operative words. So what are the operative words here? Lunchtime, worst. I feel these are, I feel, I mean, it could be different, but I feel that these are the two operative words. So I is not an operative word or about. Now, if I stress those, I think lunchtime is about the worst time of the day. Like, you know, it's not really giving you the gist of the sentence, right? And some people do that. They'll stress the I or the off. I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day, day for me, right? Um, so then people are not gonna understand your monologue. So if you focus on lunchtime, you underline that, you underline worst. Uh, you could even underline day. Though those could be three operative words. So I think lunchtime is about the worst time of day for me. So just your emphasis comes on that naturally and the sense of the sentence is conveyed. Like the next line, always having to sit here alone. I feel the operative words are always and alone because that's how this character is feeling. He's feeling like he's always alone at lunchtime. Tika? So basically if we remove all the other words from the sentence and you just say always alone, it conveys the same meaning as always having to sit here alone. So the sense of the sentence will get across. Uh, maybe if USCFP gives us an opportunity at some future time, we can you know, work on something like this a little more in more detail. But anyway, so this was operative words. Um, let me see before we wrap up in two, three minutes, if there's anything else I really wanted to say, I wanted to, yeah, we're nearing the end of the session. Okay, I wanted to just share one quick more thing. Okay, so you can also write your own monologue. So that's fine. You can look at monologues that are out there. You can write, those of you who are writers or just want to experiment, right? Just write your own monologue. That will also be something from your heart. It can be something that inspires you, something you care about, um, you know, like anything. You just stick to the same format, one to two minutes. And for that monologue, you can use these same exercises. So just write, you can write a monologue based on something from your life, from an experience in school, something that's important to you, something you like about the world, something you don't like, it could be anything. Um, but then uh, you, when you're rehearsing your monologue, you can apply these same techniques. Imagine who you're speaking it to, and you might have to make that up because 
Your own monologue could just be something from your heart, but when you're delivering it, then make an imaginary scenario. Who are you saying the monologue to? Why are you saying it to them? What do you want from them? What is the obstacle? Because only then the dramatic tension aspect of it will come out. Okay? So that's about it. Um, <laughs> Education USA says uh, that in the past, someone even did a monologue of Justin Bieber's song, Baby. So yeah, so see, even if you can pick a song, you can even pick a song like Baby, and then you can decide, okay, okay who, is, who am I saying this to? Why am I saying it to them? What's the obstacle? What are the operative words? What are the beats? Um, so, you know, you can pick a song, you can write a monologue, you can pick a theater play thing, or you can pick a poem. Those are some examples. And I will also be amongst the people that will be seeing some of the submissions. So I look forward to seeing some of them from you guys. And yep, I think it's been a full hour now. So um, Zen, should we wrap up the session? Yes. Um, do any of you have any more questions for Uzair? Yeah, we, we can take uh, one or two questions or like if there are any, yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. One very, very last question. I know I'm asking so many. Um, oh, can you do an accent in the monologue? Yes, you can do an accent. But again, accents are, I would encourage it. Take care. You can do an accent, but you have to be careful with accents. Because with an accent, you can easily fall into the trap of being inauthentic and sounding inauthentic. If the right. accent is So you'll have to practice it and and yeah do it like that it should not feel too artificial or too made up so yeah you know some people are good with, I, i'm not good with accents <laughs> to be honest so maybe that's a bias but some people are really good with accents so if they are why not you can do that right. but first practice the monologue practice it naturally get the meaning get the emotions get everything add the accent later on towards the end G, right. Hafsa, thank you no worries yeah Hafsa, you want to ask something or somebody else wants to ask, go ahead. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, so is it okay if you're biased or do you have to be neutral completely in our monologue? Is it okay if you're what? Uh, biased. If you write something biased. If you're biased? Yes. I don't understand in, in terms of? Uh, let's say we're uh, we're going against the facts or the content's not true. Hmm. Uh, okay, I, because your voice is a little muffled. So if the, sorry, just say that one more time. Let me try and grasp your question, yeah. Sorry. So, so is it okay you're biased if the content's yeah. not true? Yeah, if you're biased towards the content. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, so if you're biased towards content in terms of like you really like something, that's fine. If you don't really like something, you wouldn't be performing it. So so that's fine. Like, I mean, with each content, like with the content, yeah, you might, everyone has a different experience with the content. So that's fine. Like everyone has their own kind of, I wouldn't even use the word bias, but their own kind of life experience, which shapes how you connect with the content. So that's fine. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Zen, I feel uh, we can even, um, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I won't be able to take that many questions, but if like they do want, um, oops, has my internet dropped? Or am I still there? Can you hear um, me? No, I can hear, yes, I can hear you. But my light went in between. Okay, no, I was just saying that I could also share my email address if there, maybe if there are a few questions just limited to maybe those who attended today, like I'd be happy to uh, also take any of those over email, that would be fine, yeah. Sure. Um, if you're comfortable with answering it to those who were a part of the group, just put your email in the chat box and oh. I'll also share with the participants later on. These, just good. these participants. All right. Any other questions? I, we can stick around and take one or two more questions. I, I, yeah, pick exciting stuff, guys. Just pick exciting stuff and have fun with it and just go all out. And yeah, the there's no limitation yeah we look forward to seeing the videos it could yeah it could literally be anything it's just an opportunity for you to express yourself and uh, 
yeah and to perform and i hope uh, you keep like you know because you guys who have made it here today are interested in dramatic reading so i hope you'll keep it a part of your lives in some way or another i mean it doesn't have to be something one is doing full time it could just be something that one does for fun on the side so just to you guys must be from all over the country i'm guessing is that correct zen yes um okay. this event is open country wide so okay. anyone from anywhere can okay. participate okay so i'm generally based in islamabad uh, we used to do a lot i mean a lot of you were probably too young then to see in her place but between like uh 2010 12 13 14 that time we used to do lots and lots of plays here in the city constantly and then it kind of stopped a bit we all got busy with our jobs at work and other kind of stuff and now we're trying to bring that back a little bit there is some theater happening in karachi lahore islamabad but there needs to be a lot more and um, yeah a few of my friends and i are also trying to put something out there next year at least in islamabad so hopefully yeah there will be more stuff and yeah, you should attend <laughs> had a question yeah yeah is there a dramatic club that you uh, have that you've started in islamabad or like are there opportunities where we high school students can get involved because honestly speaking there are not a lot of uh, opportunities for drama and theater in pakistan so hearing about your venture really excited me yeah so i've dropped my email some of you who want or especially if you're based in town in islamabad you can save your the email and drop me an email and whenever there is something i can send you guys an email um unfortunately there isn't anything like that at the moment there used to be something called kuch khas in islamabad um and it was this little like community center where there were dramatics clubs and a lot of that kind of stuff so there isn't anything in a structured way right now i think uh, kids like you guys have to rely mostly on your high school dramatic societies if there are any um but if there are yeah i mean if any of you are based in islamabad you can just send an email to the my email address that i've dropped and if i hear about anything or anyone in my network is doing something where they need people to help or be involved in some capacity um i can always drop you guys an email okay thank you all thank right you. so i think we'll wrap up really happy with all the questions and um, and everybody who was here today great opportunity thank you zen once again and we'll yes. be in about all of yes. yeah yeah i just wanted to thank us there again for joining the session this was really informative even i picked up a lot of things and Good. everybody Good. just like a quick <laughs> yes sorry <laughs> everybody sorry. just a quick reminder so zen, um, the, interrupt yes. one more time can i interrupt sorry Yes, I just say can we take a quick group photo? Uh, I just wanted it for my records like a screenshot of every Sure. Can if we can go back to the big screen just for myself and those of you who have your cameras on. Okay, so big smile everybody. I'm going to take a quick screenshot. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. Sorry Zen, back to you. No worries, no worries. Okay, uh, let me just share my screen once more. Yes, so I just want to thank everybody for being a part of this. And a quick reminder that October 7th will be the deadline. So you can go on our Google form, fill that out, drop the link of your uh, YouTube video with your entry. And then November 16th will be the event. And I encourage everybody to join. because we won't release the winners before that so you would have to join the event to find out if you won but yes and if you have any questions in the meantime you can message at islambad@uscfp.org and so my screen yes and you can connect with us on our social media platforms at usa pakistan and is all across facebook twitter and instagram and if you have any other questions feel free to email me as well as zan.ali@uscfp.org and ozair was also generous enough to share his so if you want to connect with him you could also send him an email hope everybody has a good evening and i look forward to seeing some great videos from all, all of you me goodbye. too good luck bye bye thank you sir